Hey everyone, JR10 Desert Gold. I uh, doing some preliminary planning here. Uh, as I mentioned a few weeks back, I'm going to start putting some love back into this uh, this truck. Um, a few weeks back, I put in that cold air intake. That's the Globemaster. Ah, oh, yeah. Big boy. I don't know why it was taking him a while to get around. Sorry about that. I can't put I'm a, I'm a big, uh, big um, military jet guy. I like to go to air shows and. So, what I was saying is, uh, I was rudely interrupted. Um, I've got a small part next on the list that I'm going to be putting in. Um, it's again not big on power increase, but it's very uh, useful for reliability and um, better oil. Uh, distribution to both heads and that's uh, going to be a high pressure oil crossover that I'm going to be putting in as soon as it gets here which should be about next week. Um, it's not a bad process. I might have to pull out the uh, that side on the uh, intercooler pipe and then I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I might have to pull out the uh, air intake tube on that side just to get to the right to, to plugs on the head that that's going to screw into. The other, the other thing that I got in was uh, a, another neat little part, but this doesn't go in the motor. This goes under the motor. This is a oil drain system called Valvo Max. And uh, it's a pretty cool idea, you know, with this truck, you got about four gallons of, a little over four gallons of oil, which you take into consideration the oil filter. And, uh, if you get under there, like I would have to and uh, deal with four gallons and not make a mess, um, it would be a challenge for me anyway. But the, the thing that I like about this is if you drain the, the uh, oil pan and while you have the plug out you just replace it with this let's see if I can get this in. this uh, plug right here and basically it's a uh, stainless steel cap that you unscrew and this this screws into obviously this screws into the the pan and then this this becomes your permanent oil plug. When you're ready to change your oil, you just unscrew this cap and then you screw this um, fitting on, which in, in, I don't know if it'll show through there, but it's got a ball valve and once it's tightened up, that ball valve opens up and the oil runs out this tube and you can direct it more accurately and in my case, I got one, a couple of these uh, they can be disposable, but these are thick enough that, you know, you could drain them and reuse them. And, uh, you know, they fold out and they hold 10 liters, which is about two and a half gallons. And um, just fill it up and put your cap back on and you are good to go without creating an oil slick over half your driveway. But these issues aren't what I'm... Gonna wanted to go over and hopefully I'll do it real quick. 
this is the old air box, cold air box, and this is the old filter that I pulled out. This is a K&N uh, reusable, so you clean it and oil it every as, as often as necessary with or given the uh, atmospheric issues that you're dealing with. In, in my case, there's a lot of dust and dirt in the air, so it, it gets kind of demanding during the uh, monsoon seasons and the dry times of the year. But the thing I wanted to touch on real quickly is this, uh, this is the new cold air intake system right here. And this is the snorkel. There's also a, an opening that butts up against the fender wall, so it's taken in cool air from the fender well and the front of the truck through the grill. The old system that I had, uh, uh, this, this had a similar principle. I mean, this is the snorkel that runs up through the front. This was the battery tray and this is the air box for the filter. But the difference is this is exactly how it was in the truck. All of this was open. And then you'll see there's no opening for cool air through the fender well. And then obviously uh, over the years damage and uh, wear and tear have uh, taken its toll on, on the plastic. So hot air was getting in through here. A ton of it was getting in through here. And basically the end result was even in uh, cooler weather, you know, like we, we started cooling down, you know, months ago and it would be 70, 75 degrees and with the old system, um, the air intake sensor was reading 120 and obviously what's going on is the motor is giving off so much heat and it's just venting right into that air box and the air sensor in the filter or in the filter box was reading you know 110 even though the outside temperature was 75. So I, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, switched over to the SMB cold air box, and as you can see, it's sealed all the way around. The snorkel battery is, is sitting by itself in front of the, uh, sealed off from the air box. And uh, since I put it in, the temperature difference between air intake and what uh, outside temperature was, was a difference of, at the most, maybe four degrees. So for instance, last night I was driving around, the outside temperature was 68 degrees, and that's what my um, intake air temperature sensor was reading, almost right on. I have not been off more than two or three percent since I've installed this with respect to variance between outside temperature and um, uh, engine or air intake temperature. Now obviously in the summertime when it's 120 here and it's sucking in 120 through these snorkels, yeah, it's still going to, you know, not be the ambient temperature plus whatever the motor's putting off because the motor's going to be running even hotter with, with all of that increased ambient temperature. So, as far as a final review on this, uh, I'm sold. I mean, uh, anything that anybody wants to know about whether these things work or don't work, um, I can guarantee you they work. They do what they say, they say they're going to do.
there is one caveat to all of this, and that is uh, uh, there are situations, especially with with newer model vehicles like you know the, the 2007 and above uh, power strokes and um, the you know all the newer vehicles that are EPA hand handcuffed. It's gonna it's gonna be an issue with some people because as as the EPA got stricter, they put more demands on the uh, computer system. Uh, it had EGRs installed. Um, I mean, for Pete's sake, I was unaware of what what uh, exhaust diesel exhaust fluid was. I thought at first it was a uh, a um, joke, you know, like blinker fluid, but uh, yeah, it, it exists, and fortunately my truck doesn't use it, it's uh, a pain in the ass, and it does negatively affect operations and fuel economy indirectly and directly with, with your diesel trucks. This is a 2000. Uh, in my humble opinion, the best uh, power stroke that uh, Ford has put out. It has none of that crap. It hasn't got the EGR. It hasn't got all the extra uh, sensors and computer uh, regulations that have to be adjusted if you go to a uh, cold air intake that's different than what the factory has put in. So you got to check with uh, what what would be involved uh, with your particular vehicle before getting into it and spending some money on something that might negatively impact your vehicle as opposed to being a uh, bonus or positive. So, final summation is that with respect to my vehicle, being a 2000, that, that is definitely worth the money that I've paid for it. It's already having an impact on my miles per gallon and um, the fuel, I mean the air filter, as I'll show you here in a second, is larger and definitely more efficient at taking in cold air. So. Uh, that should cover it. I'll uh, probably go over uh, when the HPOP uh, crossover, high pressure oil crossover comes in and maybe I'll do a little partial install video on that. I hate doing install videos because of my rattle hands and I get all sorts of trolls liking to uh, focus on that. So. I don't need that, but we'll see. Anyway, this is JR10 Desert Gold. Have fun, be safe.